Hey, Mike. Hey. How's it going, man? Good, brother. How's everything going? Right, good to see you here again, good man. Good to see you, too. I'm sorry I'm a little bit late. No I, um, I just, I knew you wanted to stop by and talk a little bit about yeah. success you've had in Carson around light industry and sort of getting the warehouses and so on uh, back into a really vibrant uh, uh, mode of operation. I wanted to figure out if there's some things maybe that we can learn from you and do here in Watts. Sure, what, sure. How did you do that? Well, one, you know, um, being a city council member in the city of Carson, I'm the biggest cheerleader when it comes down to businesses being attracted to come to the city of Carson. Carson mm -hmm. is 60% industrial. And mm -hmm. I know that here in Watts, there's some great opportunities. One, to create light manufacturing kind of jobs um, and also partnerships in, this, in, in the Watts community. Um, I remember growing up riding my bike around the Lansing area mm -hmm. and the whole nine yards. Lansing. And, yeah. Lansing. And I know that that area can be developed and create a designation that really can boom um, and bring the prosperity here to, just to the community. And so I'm, I'm willing to do it, even outside the city of Carson. Good. Well, I agree. I think that Lansing, you know, it's been kind of on the, on the board for 20 years or more. Uh, and, and maybe this time it'll finally happen. I think that um, WLCAC actually proposed to build the Lancet site out, and uh, we looked at it as part of a larger grouping of properties. We have another 11 acres. Mm -hmm. uh, we were looking for a way to create a 20 or 30 acre development uh, That'd be excellent over location. in that area because you've got a housing community there that's kind of like it's isolated. Sure. You know, you can drive down 108th Street and never see it. Right. Uh, but if you turn, you know, down McKinley, all of a sudden you're in this little, uh, it's like a sub-suburban. Right, a little community. Yeah, it's a little community within the community. Um, and all those, you know, manufacturing opportunities used to be mm -hmm. on 108th Street. And the warehouses right. used to be where these folks, they lived within walking distance. So, sure. they, I mean, it was good for all those reasons. that You didn't have to drive everywhere. Mm -hmm. You could walk to work. Uh, the community thrived because obviously nothing solves poverty like a job. Like a job. You know, and so... Um, but one of the things I want to touch bases on, Tim, you said something. I'm hearing your vision. I'm hearing a vision that's larger than WLCAC mm -hmm. in this particular area. And it's a diamond that's it's a jewel in our community. That's right. This jewel can put people back to work, can build up a community... Um, and create an atmosphere, a corridor of opportunities That's right. that could be a bridge over people, you know, that could be a bridge that will run endlessly in this community of prosperity. That's and right. when you say give a man a job, you give a man a job, he creates his self-confidence up, he wants to make, become an investor in the community. That's right. And so I, I you know, I want to help you and help moving your vision forward because I have it experience level in the city of Carson mm -hmm. and because I grew up in Watts, born and raised right here, rode my skateboard, my bike in this mm -hmm. particular area, your vision needs to be built up so that we can put people to work. So you said something about it being like a diamond or a jewel. Jewel. And you know, uh, if you have a diamond in dark in the dark it doesn't it doesn't shine. Come on now. And so <laughs> I just want to bring a little light to this jewel and let it shine. Shine. Wait, where did you grow up in, in, in near Watts? I grew up right here on 89th and Central. You told me that before, didn't you? Yeah. You know I grew up on 88th and Central. I do know that. So I don't know why we never <laughs> ran into each other, but let me say this. You and I know how tough that was. Oh, it was. And the fact that we're both sitting here is a testament to our uh, commitment to persevere and to survive and to be here for what's best, next and what's best. Right, but it also is a testament that we are committed to our community. All right, that's right. We're committed to our community. Well, let's go take a ride and look at this property. I'm ready. All right, let's go. So, uh, so we're just gonna go right around the corner, Mike, and take a look at uh, that Lansit area. Uh, we call it the Lanzit property, but sure. you know the Lanzit project. But there's a lot more there that you'll see. Right. Uh, so as we leave, um, yeah, I haven't been in this in this Lanzit area since I was. It's been years, but I remember growing up, riding my bike over the bridge and going in the community and stuff like that. Right yeah. down the street from Block High School. So yeah. gonna bring back some old memories. Huh. Uh, you've got the Maxine Water School here on the left. Right. Beautiful um, school. Yes. 
and there's a recycling center and it's one of the best ones I've seen and the in terms of how it looks you know because they've actually taken some pride in in how they uh, how they run that business sure um, but there are all kinds of little businesses on the right and left side of the you street. know all of these store these business fronts look almost like they're abandoned but trust me they have you know there's hundreds of people working in all of this sure you know in over here on the other side of the street, you've got furniture store uh, manufacturing and, you know, smog check facilities and mechanics and even uh, streets have been vacationed, you know, to uh, create space for people to rent, to do whatever they're, you know, doing with storage and so on. Um, wood turning facilities. Right. Um, you know, all kinds of, of uh, light industrial activity happening just behind these facades. But this is all opportunity. That's right. For our for this community to grow and thrive. That's right. And make this a mecca of Watts in terms of employment opportunities and also producing um, goods and manufacturing opportunities for this entire community. And we're only five minutes away from uh, the, the new Martin Luther King Hospital. And so you think about medical you know, supplies, medical, industry stuff, uh, biomedical, uh, management, all of that. Yeah. You see this right away? Yeah. See, that's a street. Yeah, that's a, That's the equivalent of, you know, at least a one-way uh, street. And it's the same thing on the other side. Uh, you can't see it because of the things that are parked here. Sure. But if you can, you know, uh, look at this side, and you're looking at the back of all of those buildings that we just passed, that have no adequate ingress and egress. Right. And if we could, uh, you know, get the, the, you can see it glimpse through here and you can see that right of way. Right. If there was a way to get into that space, you'd be behind those businesses. They could offload, they could onload and keep their, their businesses moving. Absolutely. 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 Now we're going into the little neighborhood, um, you know, that, that is hidden by all of this. Mm -hmm. And you see all of these little quaint homes. Some people are obviously doing a great job of maintaining their properties. Right. Others are obviously struggling. There's a school here that probably deserves to be on the federal uh, historic landmark registry because you can see it's so old. Oh, yeah, so old. I don't know if that's 100 years we're looking at or what, but somebody should do the, the history on that school to to demonstrate how a long time ago people were planning communities where kids could go to school and families could go to work and you know except for the fact that we we let these uh, big manufacturing opportunities slip away uh, communities like this suffer right. you know, they right. could have thrived uh, in, in, in perpetuity but they suffered because they lost you know that, that thriving manufacturing core Right. But with your vision, we can turn this into, uh, you know, an, a place of, of greater prosperity um, and it can thrive again because I'm just looking at the tremendous possibilities that exist right here. This is this is the, the, the jewel. This is the jewel of the community. Well, you need programs. You need SBA. You need right. uh, you need whatever the. I know the Obama administration has promoted, you know, invention and and, and thinking about new ways to uh, advance technology and so on. Uh, we're going to turn around here, gonna... ride you down, take you on a ride down 111th place, so you can see, even though the manufacturing isn't really going on, all of the space is still being used in innovative ways that create let's just say self-sufficiency uh, and in some cases job. This is right, the right. Um, Kelmark Tow Center mm. and um, as you can see they're in there you know storing cars and and they you know hook them and, and, and repossess them and so right. on and store them here which is you know, you know it's a legitimate business mm -hmm. uh, but it's thriving on the poverty of the community. People can't register their vehicle. Right. Uh, they can't, you know, pay their ticket, whatever it is, and their car gets impounded, impounded. and then they eventually lose it. You can't see, but this whole space back here is, you know, 
just packed with cars. These cars. Uh, basically from the area uh, as a result of people just not being able to take care of their business. Um, sure. Right next to it, you see the whole opposite. You see thriving, growing uh, gardens where people are taking care of their families and growing what they eat. And this goes on for acres and acres. So it's kind of like a, you know, an indication of how the community responds to what it perceives to be its need. Right. Here you've got the Kedron Community Health Center. Um, and it's, again, this is in a very, very concealed kind of space, uh, but it's responding to the perceived need of a community. Um, as right. we pass Kedron, uh, we come upon the entrance of um, uh, a warehouse operation. This is actually a space that WLCAC owns. This space. Um, yes, and this is a building with 120,000 square feet. Uh, We're coming upon another WLCAC property where we have uh, some warehouse operations and store materials and so mm -hmm. on. Uh, this property is occupied by handy worker services and transportation operators and so on. Then we come on this property, which is a WLCAC owned property, which is a charter school that is um, leased by Green Dot. Okay. Uh, Green Dot Charter Schools right. is uh, the, the tenant there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then another property that WLCAC owns uh, is called the Veolia site. That's what we call it. It's currently unoccupied, uh, but we have a tenant uh, that's lined up that wants to occupy this site. Again, an opportunity to do light industrial manufacturing Sure. if the program is in place that uh, supports that. Now we're passing what's called the Laidlaw site. This is a, mm -hmm. a, a site that they used to use for the Laidlaw school transportation system uh, for school buses, uh, but now it's being used for waste management uh, operation. And then, of course, in front of us is the Lancet site. Uh, and you can now see how this string of properties connects. And, you know, the yeah. Lancet site, you know, <laughs> what can I say, 10 acres of uh, pristine opportunity. You know, Humongous opportunity. Yes, why can't we manufacture uh, prefab homes or automobiles or uh, light fixtures or something that goes on the Metro Rail train? I wouldn't care what it is as long as it's something that we know is gonna continue to be needed deep into the future. No, right. I see the strong possibilities here. This is where you rode your bicycle, right? Yeah. They didn't have a street in it, though, at that they time. They didn't have a street in it. And but I used to come been, over here all the time. This has been vacant, like, man, I'm going to say, like, 20 years? Come on, man. It's, you know, it used to be a Caltrans site, um, and they stored vehicles, and there's no reason this shouldn't be a, a thriving industrial site. There, there's there's absolutely no reason. You have so much potential, so many opportunities that exist right here. Um just giving the right exposure to people who have the investment, who can come and take your vision and just build on it. This will just, this would be the economic um, uh, boost this whole entire community needs. That's right. So um, as we leave the area, uh, you know, I mean, you get a sense of how isolated it is. There's no through traffic. The street is basically kind of dead. Right. Uh, because it it doesn't connect anything. Sure. This is this is really one way out in the morning and one way back in, you know, uh, at the end of the day. This is a stimulus package for the community. Mm -hmm. I just saw that. This could be a stimulus package for this entire community. Mm -hmm. And everybody that wants a job, that has a desire to work, can get it. Because the possibilities are right here. I'm a firm believer that um, in people in a vision and actually not sitting on a vision but running with the vision yes. um, and getting and hooking up other people like minded um, who are similar who cares and can see the vision and help move that vision uh, to fruition. So let's do this it. could be done. Let's do it. Let's do it.